Hello all, in this video I will demonstrate how to run confirmatory factor analysis and structural location modeling using JAS software. So according to Anderson and Gerbing 1988 citation is concerned, so running the same analysis is a two stage process. So that's the reason I did not divide the entire video into two components. That is one for CFA and then another one, one is for same. So it's a combined version of both analysis. Um, so for this demonstration purpose, I'm going to use a data set associated with this paper. So in this paper, I have constructs like job satisfaction, family satisfaction, and then work family balance, life satisfaction. These are the few con uh, latent constructs I have. And with the help of JASP, that is one of the open source software, I'm going to run this analysis. So for this demonstration, hypothetically, I'm just creating a structural model, something similar to this nature. Here I'm saying that work family balance is related to job satisfaction and family satisfaction. Finally resulted in life satisfaction. Also there is a relationship between JS and FS and then work family balance to life satisfaction. This is the same model I'm going to test it now. In order to run this analysis, first we need to complete CFA analysis. That is confirmatory factor analysis. So in order to do the CFA, so what you have to do is you need to have four latent constructs in your model and then all of these four latent constructs need to be co uh, I mean uh, you, you need to keep the covariance relationship or correlation relationship among all of these four constructs. So basically this is how your uh, covariance or co correlation relationship will look like. So basically, I'll be having six correlational or covariance relationships for each and every constructs. And each and every constructs, for example, if we take JS, JS will be measured using three items. Actually, I have measured JS using three items. So JS1 is the item number one for this particular construct. JS2 is the item number two. And then JS3 is the item number three. Similarly, each and every items will have their own error values. This is E1, E2 and then E3. This is how your uh, CFA model will look like, will look like that. So uh, even for FS and then work family balance and then life satisfaction for everything, you will have their respective indicators and then respective error values. So by running the analysis, I will also show you how your entire CFA model will look like uh, in JASP software. So in order to run this analysis, first let me open JASP. So in JASP software, you can run SEM as well as CFA without any coding procedure. Of course, for SEM, little bit of coding is required even in JASP software. So in JASP, they use a package called Lavan package. So with the help of Lavan package only, they are running the SEM analysis. So now let me show you the uh, analysis. First, uh, you need to import the data. So this is my data set. So if you look at this data set, I have construct like job satisfaction, which is measured using three items. And then family satisfaction is measured using another three items. And then life satisfaction is measured using another five items. Similarly, work family balance was measured using five items. Now, in order to do the analysis, you just go to factor click confirmatory factor analysis so here you need to define the latent constructs so here i'm referring job satisfaction as jsat you just include the corresponding items over here you create the new construct that is family satisfaction i'm just giving a label called fsat you include the family satisfaction respective items here here I'm defining work family balances W, F, B, A, L and then you include the respective items over here and then I'm creating life satisfaction L set. Include the corresponding items associated with the light and construct life satisfaction over here. So this is how you can create the constructs in JAS software. Now what you can do is you can go to model options here i don't need anything additional outputs you can ask for the additional fit measures and then r square values and then modification indices uh, even if you want to see the lavan syntax you can check it 
to do multi group cfa you can use this option otherwise you go to plots so i need the model plot with the parameter values standardized one and then in the advanced option i would like to use uh, ml estimation that is maximum likelihood estimation um, that's it now you come back to the output window still the system is processing the outputs so this is the chi square value basically so uh, here i'm getting 98 as a degrees of freedom so in same the degrees of freedom value is computed on the basis of this particular formula so the formula is very simple p into p plus 1 divided by 2 minus k so here this k is nothing but number of parameters to be estimated this p is nothing but number of items available in your model so basically js is measured using three item fs is measured using three item and then work family balance is measured using 10 items life sorry five items and then uh, life satisfaction is measured using another five items so totally five plus five 10 and then plus uh, 3 13 and then 13 plus 3 16 so totally i have 16 items in my model so when you substitute the 16 into this formula 16 into 16 plus 1 divided by 2 minus k this k is nothing but number of parameters to be estimated so how many parameters we are going to estimate so basically i have six covariances plus 16 loadings for each and every item we will be getting a loading so 16 loadings plus 16 errors this is all the variances and then covariances uh, as well as loadings we are going to estimate so this will be 16 plus 16 32 32 plus 6 38 so here the minus k value is 38 now you solve this equation that is 16 into 17 divided by 2 minus 38 you will get 98 as a value this 98 is reported over here this is how the system is computing the uh, degrees of freedom value in cfa and uh, here in sim as well as cfa we are getting this chi square test p value as uh, not significant uh, but still that's fine there are other fit values also available in terms of understanding this and one more fit value you can also consider is uh, c minimum value that is chi square ratio value so chi square ratio is very simple your chi square value that is 201.40 divided by 98 you will get some value that value must be less than 3 and if you look at the other fit values for uh, interpretation purpose we can consider comparative fit index and then uh, tla value this should be above 0.9 in other uh, packages you we also get uh, gfa agfa values that should be again above 0.9 and if you look at this rmsa value rmsa value is 0 0.060 according to her book citation so it should be less than 0 0.080 so here uh, the model fit values are pretty good pretty decent so these are the r square values for each and every items available in our model and here we have the unstandardized regression weights that is factor loadings for each and every items that is available in our model so this lambda 1 1 lambda 1 2 are nothing but the loading symbols basically and according to this table i can conclude that almost all of these coefficients are statistically significant you just look at p values less than 0 0.01 so at 99 percent uh, confidence limit i can strongly say that all of these coefficients that is loadings are highly significant now if you look at this covariances this is nothing but the correlations uh, i mean the covariances among the constructs so all of these six covariances also highly significant so no issues and then this residual variances are nothing but for each and every item explicitly we will be able to estimate the error values especially in cfa as well as the same is concerned so those values only we are getting here and in terms of getting the standardized coefficients uh, you can also uh, look at this model plot values for example if you look at this model picture so here you will be able to get the uh, factor loadings you will be able to see the factor loadings with the standardized estimates just look at so for the js1 item i'm getting 0.88 as a factor loading and then for uh, yeah for uh, uh, second item js2 item i'm getting 0.86 as a factor loading and then for uh, js3 that is third item in job satisfaction i am getting 0.78 as a 
factor loading this is how you can get the factor loadings so here we have the uh, uh, i mean the uh, error variances that is standardized error values for each and every items so this is how we get the values so how do we estimate this error value that logic is very simple so basically 1 minus lambda square is a error uh, calculation formula for example here for js1 item we are getting 0 0.88 as a value let me open a excel see for the first job satisfaction items uh, item i'm getting 0.88 as a loading for the second item i'm getting 0.86 as a loading for the third item i'm getting 0.78 as a loading so now you just square everything this value multiplied with this value and then here you apply this formula 1 minus this squared loadings you will get approximately the same result see the error if you keep this values in two digit format now look at the errors for the first item the error is 0.23 for the second item the error is 0.27 uh, due to the issue of this rounding values i'm getting 0.26 otherwise it, it will be like 0.27 and then here i'm getting 0.39 as a value so this is how uh, the system is explicitly taking into account this uh, measurement error while estimating the factor loadings as well as the regression coefficients for the rest of the path relationships that is available in the model. So this is how you can also uh, run the CFA. Uh, whenever we are trying to report the CFA results, we are supposed to provide uh, AVE values and then construct reliability values. So in order to compute the average variance extracted value, the formula is um, sum of lambda square divided by n n is nothing but number of items so for example here what you do is you just take the average of you just take the average of the squared loadings for job satisfaction you will get some value this value is nothing but average variance extracted value that is av value according to her book citation is concerned this must be above 0.5 and in order to compute the construct reliability value, the formula is sum of lambda whole square divided by sum of lambda whole square plus sum of error. For job satisfaction, we have the error here. So let me compute the sum of error here. Before that, let me compute the sum of lambda whole square. So equal to sum of this three lambda is nothing but loadings. Now I'll take the square of this value this is my sum of lambda whole square now i'll take the sum of error so i have the errors for job satisfaction here now the formula is sum of lambda whole square divided by sum of lambda whole square plus this error so let me keep parenthesis over here so this value is nothing but your construct reliability value. So this is how we uh, estimate the construct reliability as well as uh, average variance extracted value in same approach, especially in CBSIM, that is covariance based same approach. Whether you use Lavan package or whether you use some other softwares, it can be anything. So everywhere, this is the formula, this is the logic, how we can estimate the AVE and then CR values, that is construct reliability value. This construct reliability CR value is referred as McDonald's Omega. So for reporting purpose, you need to report the standardized loadings, whether that is significant or not, and then you have to report the standardized errors. Then you have to report the uh, AVE value, construct reliability value, and the Cronbach alpha value then each and every loading significance so these are all the things you have to report it with the help of that you can uh, say that the convergent validity of the model is well established this is also a kind of validity that is being established uh, after running the cfa analysis um, now quickly i'll show you how to run sem now i'm pretty uh, i mean i'm pretty satisfied with the model fit values and everything and uh, finally i'll also discuss something about the model fit values so when you do this uh, CFA analysis, here you also get something called modification indices. 
let me show you the modification indices yeah this is what modification indices uh, i think the result is available here so for example with respect to regression relationship when you see the modification indices values about 10 those changes can be done uh, only between the constructs especially in same this can be done and in terms of talking about the residual covariances that is error covariances wherever you see higher value about 10 with the positive part change so here you can do the error uh, i mean you can fix the error uh, uh, covariances between ls3 and ls4 through that way you will be able to improve the model fit value uh, but since i am already satisfied with the model fit values so i don't want to do any modification now i'll straight away jump into the same process so just click same structural equation modeling uh, so here we need to do some uh, bit of uh, I mean we need to use bit of syntax in terms of running the same analysis so in order to do that what I'm going to do is you can use the same syntax and then there you can create the model otherwise manually also you can type the syntax I'll tell you the logic how you can create the syntax so here you need to type your CFA syntax as well as same syntax for more details you just go to uh, you just go to Lavan page so here you will be able to get here you will be able to get the tutorials uh, related to creating the model syntax especially CFM as well as uh, SEM so for more details you just go through this page um, so now what I'll do is I'll create the model so I'm defining my job satisfaction as JSAT equal till day this is defined using three items js1 plus js2 plus js3 now what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create the measurement model structure and then fsat is defined using fs1 plus fs2 plus fs3 and then work family balance is defined using work family balance item 1 plus work family balance item 2 plus work family balance item 3 plus work family balance item 4 plus work family balance item 5 now life satisfaction is defined using ls1 plus ls2 plus ls3 plus ls4 plus ls5 now what i can do is i can uh, create the regression relationships so in order to do that just go back and check my model so i have a regression relationship between work family balance to js work family balance to ls and then work family balance to fs first i'll start with the js so with respect to js is defined using jsat till day work family balance and then fsat is having a relationship from work family balance as well as from jsat and then life satisfaction is having a relationship from jsat plus fsat plus work family balance so the logic of understanding the syntax is very simple so in order to define your measurement model structure latent construct so latent construct can be defined using this logic jsat equal to tilde symbol this tilde symbol is available in your keyboard just above the tab key js1 js2 js3 are the three items used to measure my job satisfaction construct similarly family satisfaction is measured using fs1 fs2 fs3 and then work family balance was measured using work family balance 1 2 3 4 5 life satisfaction construct was measured using ls1 ls2 ls3 ls4 ls5 and here the last three lines of syntax is related to the regression relationship so i have a relationship 
just look at this uh, picture so i have a arrow that is going from work family balance to js basically work family balance is the exogenous construct and the job satisfaction is the endogenous construct here so there is a arrow here uh, so work family balance on J, jsat so here f set is the dv uh, fs is having relationship that is coming from js as well as work family balance that is the second line in the third line life satisfaction is the dv so there is a arrow coming from js fs and then work family balance so this is what i have defined here now in order to run the analysis you just uh, follow this instruction control plus enter key when you type yeah this j set is not recognized due to some reason that's what the error says let me check it once again j set js1 plus js2 plus js3 l set fine 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 just a minute see there is a small uh, error in the j set syntax now i have corrected it um, even i could not able to locate the exact error also sometime it happens to me uh, maybe there could be a bug in the uh, package i don't know the reason st still i'm using the same syntax only what i did was uh, while recording this uh, video i just uh, paused the video and then rewritten this particular line of syntax now the model is running so if you see the output on the right hand side you can see the output so in the output options you can ask for the fit measures similar to cfa you can ask for the r square value you can also ask for the standardized estimates path diagram with the parameter values you can ask for the modification indices also then model options so there are certain things you can also ask it from here estimate options yeah this is fine um, and then uh, if you want to do multi-group uh, same the, even that can be done here so in multi-group same for example if you have a um, categorical moderator when you want to test the moderation effect in same umbrella you can do the multi-group same yeah now come back to this result so for this model i'm getting uh, chi square value is 201 400 and the p value significance same degrees of freedom only i'm also getting here um and then you look at the cfa and then tla values this is pretty decent nfa value is also above 0.9 so this is fine now look at the rmsa value same rmsa value only here also i'm getting similar to cfa analysis and then this is all nothing but my r square values for job satisfaction i'm getting 0.142 as a r square for family satisfaction i'm getting 0.340 as a r square for life satisfaction, I'm getting 0.743 as a R square value. Uh, so similar to CFA analysis, here also I'm getting the regression, unstandardized regression weights, and then their corresponding p value for each and every construct. And here we have the standardized coefficient values. With the help of the standardized values, also you can compute the CR and other things that is AVE and then CR values. Now look at this regression coefficient coefficients. This is important to us. So between family satisfaction, uh, work family balance is the predictor and on family satisfaction, what is the effect, whether this effect is significant or not. So th that is what we are getting here. And then under the standardized table, here we have the solve co uh, column. This is nothing but the beta values, that is standardized regression weight values. Between job satisfaction and family satisfaction, this is also significant almost all of the path relationships were significant at 99 percent confidence limit except the relationship between work family balance and life satisfaction this is significant at 95 percent confidence limit because the p-value is um, less than 0 0.05 that is the exact p-value for this particular relationship is 0 0.022 so as far as this model is concerned i can say that almost all of these path relationships were significant at a 99% confidence limit except this part so the direct relationship between work family balance and life satisfaction is significant at 95% confidence limit so all of my direct relational hypothesis were uh, see, uh, i mean tested and then i can conclude that it is supported so this is how we can infer the results so here we have the standardized uh, sorry um, uh, unstandardized error values and then the standardized error values even in the cfa analysis also i have shown you 
how to compute the standardized uh, error values here in the modification indices if you look at the uh, mainly you can focus on the regression relationships for uh, modifying your model so i'm not getting uh, much of modification here except a few of the error covariances but creating the error covariances is not highly recommended if you are satisfied with the model fit values so i'm just skipping this part this is what the same model which we have constructed so here you have the work family balance on life satisfaction through yeah, family satisfaction as well as job satisfaction so the model is something different from the model which i have drawn in the zamboard but the relationships were mentioned over here and this is exactly similar to the model which i have drawn so this is how you can run the same in terms of reporting you can report the path relationships along with the p values and then along with the r square values and you may have to report the cfa values also uh, uh, i mean model fit values also so for uh, fit measures you can consider cfa tli nfi values here uh, under the badness of fit measures you can consider rmsa value and then srmr value so srmr value lower the value better the model fit this is how you can um, understand this model fit values here we do get the gfa value that is goodness of fit index this should be above 0.9 so these are the few things you may have to report it whenever you are trying to present your results in the manuscript or maybe thesis work for more details about learning a law one package as well as uh, uh, same related content uh, kindly refer any of the standard text on structural location modeling or uh, you can also refer uh, some of the web tutorials that is available from youtube thank you so much